Hello. Hi, everybody. We're setting up the meeting. It says live. We'll see if it comes through. If you guys are here already, hello, hello. That means you joined really super fast. Okay. Oh my gosh, Alicia, I think this worked. Hooray. This is amazing because if you guys know our history with Fun Club, sometimes the internets don't always work out. And if you hear a bunch of squeaking, it's because my dog refuses ah. to leave my office. So if I disappear, it's to deal with that. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, this is like a small miracle because I was just telling Alicia that um, our internet line got cut today. So I'm doing this off my phone, which is totally par for the course when it comes to um the our fun clubs but hi welcome to our celebration fun club we haven't done this, the fun club dance in forever the fun club um <laughs> oh i can't hear you oh um, that's the but if you're watching from home take oh. a quick brain break <laughs> and do a little fun club dance with us fun fun club dance. come on put down your device it's so fun uh i wish we should have a fun club song um That'll be that'll that'll be our goals for 20, 2021 fun club song. Um, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight is going to be a celebration um, of everything that you have done this semester, of everything that you have survived, and uh, just a fun chance to be together. So we've got giveaways, which I'm going to set my timer right now. I'm going to be I have a timer. And I'm going to be giving stuff away. I'm going to do it every 10 minutes. I'm going to get to everything. So maybe I'll do it every eight minutes. That'll be annoying. Um, but every eight minutes. And then um, we are also going to be doing a little demo, a fun demo. And everybody needs to have something to draw with and something to draw on. So if you're like totally comfortable flipping between screens on your device, like if you can, if you have an iPad, and you can draw somewhere and have the Facebook live open. Great. Um, you can do that. Otherwise, like grab a piece of paper. It can be a scrap piece of paper. It doesn't have to be fancy, but have something to draw with and something to draw on. And we're going to talk about assessment because assessment is so fun. Because y'all know that I'm obsessed with assessment, right? <laughs> And Alicia, I know that we haven't like said anything publicly about this, but do you feel comfortable saying something about assessment in 2021? I do. So I've been teasing member uh, participants of Teachers Labs and saying we're going to have a full course of assessment coming soon, coming soon, and it keeps getting pushed off for some really good reasons. However, in February, we are going to do a full three session deep dive, the deepest dive into assessment, standards-based grading, assessment for equity, reducing bias in grading and survival for teachers who use comprehension-based instruction, such as SOMOS, New SOMOS, SOMOS. It's going to, you're gonna be able to earn graduate credits and I am so excited. And the best of all, we're gonna call it Fall in love with assessment, or no, love on assessment. Love on oh, assessment. Gosh. Well, whatever. Something about love, love on assessment. We're gonna love on assessment next year. So, um, just a little bit of, uh, uh, not really a preview tonight, but we are gonna talk about assessment because everybody's asking about assessments. We know you guys have a lot of semester end stuff that you've got to deal with, and uh, we want to support you in that. So, first of all, Alicia. You are here, you left something early to be here, something that was really fun and I want you to tell us about it. So I just started my second class or my second module of online Chinese learning with Dr. Terry Waltz and some so other fancy. fabulous teachers. And I have to tell you guys, so Terry Waltz wrote an amazing book called Teaching TPRS with Chinese Characteristics. She's an incredible writer, thinker, blogger, presenter, and teacher, and really one of the leaders of our profession. Having the opportunity to watch her, to experience her uh, modeling the techniques that she writes about and talks about, to live it as a student, to learn how to read in Chinese and have a whole conversation and it's mind blowing. It's giving me so many good reminders for how just talking with people and making sure they understand in the target language is unbelievably powerful. And the best part is 
my husband and I are taking the class together and that is <laughs> yeah that's going to be really interesting because I mean obviously he's around you all the time and you're always talking and teaching about uh, language teaching so he has some kind of a context but it's got to be a little bit interesting like with the conversations between you two after because you're probably a little bit more meta about it than he is you'd be surprised this is also <laughs> the guy who has like retroactively been a little angry at all the language educators that he's had bless his heart um, and who had really positive experience in fluency fast classes for with karen rowan so yeah. he's a special guy that's awesome you know it um i know that everybody has so much on their plates and um you know we have to choose what we take on and what kinds of trainings um that we do and so i not, not everybody can uh commit to doing a language class um even if it's for you know a six-week period or whatever but if that's something, um, if, if you think that uh, if you're looking for training um, it, as a language teacher, enrolling in a Fluency Fast course in 2021 or taking a, a, one of Terry's classes um, is an amazing way to um, be learning a language and then also to be learning about teaching a language um, through just through experiencing um, a, a master class like theirs. So, and I just cool. dropped some links in uh, in the chats for you guys for Fluency Fast. I know they're starting oh. classes, and also Elevate Education is offering classes in French, Spanish. Oh, awesome! And I feel like they've added another language. Oh, I didn't know they were doing language classes. That's awesome! Oh my gosh, so many different and like really different styles of teachers too. So that would be really neat to kind of do a smattering um, and learn from them. Okay, so uh, I just came back from picking up my husband from dropping off his truck for an oil change. So my evening was way less cool than yours. Um, but now it's fun because we're here. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do tonight, um, before we get uh, interrupted maybe by um, the prize buzzer, um, is I want to demo a little activity. I'm going to do it in English um, that I read about on Diane Neubauer's blog. And if any of you guys are using the Flex curriculum, you might have seen this. I think it showed up for the first time in unit six of level one. And then I used it um, a couple other times. So this is a really, really simple activity. I know you guys are tired. Um, you're probably sick of coming up with things that are going to work for your classroom students and for your um, for your online learners. And this one is no prep and uh, super easy. You could do it tomorrow, but please do it in the target language. So I'm going to do it. Oh, thanks, Mirabel. Yeah, I guess I haven't been saying hi. I'm reading your comments, but I'm just too busy talking to Alicia. So hi and welcome. And maybe drop in the comments where you're watching from. Tell us where you are. I'm in Vermont and we got a small teeny weeny bit of snow, but not nearly enough. Okay, so the first uh, thing that we're going to do is uh, my, my first sentence. Oh, I just realized that I'm not uh, using, I have my Facebook covering up my background. So I haven't been standing in the correct part of my background, which is like a pet peeve of yours, right, Alicia? Is this uh, you know. <laughs> I did a virtual conference this weekend and um, I noticed that it's really only the language teachers who are using virtual backgrounds. So friends, pat yourselves on the back. You know what, um, uh, Alicia has really, she, I, no, I'm not doing the quick job demo now. I'm talking about virtual backgrounds, but um, this fall was the first time that I really like attended virtual conference. I was registered for a bunch this summer, but I just, was summering, so I didn't end up attending a whole lot of things. And uh, the difference that it makes when your teacher slash presenter is teaching with a virtual background is amazing. Like I just felt so much more connected um, and interested in whatever was going on than when um, when it was just somebody with a little video in the in the corner with a screen. So um, you know this this break. Not that I don't. Well, we're going to talk about how don't think about teaching over the break but if you do think about teaching over the break um and you haven't yet tried out virtual backgrounds um that would be a really fun thing um to uh play around with and get comfortable with because i think it really makes a huge difference we got people from everywhere welcome 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 okay so
So this is the activity. You need to have something to draw with and something to draw on. So it could just be a piece of paper um, or it could be your device, um, whatever, but you're not gonna be drawing anything yet. So first we're gonna basically create a super simple mini one word image together. And I first learned, oh my gosh, Alicia disappeared. Where'd she Whoa. go? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Was the reflection from your wall disappearing you? That yes. So funny. Oh wait, the prize chimer, the prize chimer. Perfect. Okay, hold on. The last person that commented, the last person that commented was Salima Francis. Francis. Salima, Salima, you are the first winner and you have to pick a card. So Salima, uh, 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 card color, there's one green one <laughs> that disappears. There's um, red, purple, uh, oh gosh, I don't know how to describe these colors, dark purple, blue, yellow, or green. So pick a card and the card contains your prize. So let us know which one you want and I will give you whatever prize it is. Salima is, I don't know if I'm saying that. Uh, Salima, whenever, yeah. Oh, good, you tagged her. Thank you so much, Alicia. Okay, so pick a color card. I'll keep going, uh, maybe. I don't know how long to wait. Um, but drop it in the comments. So red, purple, dark purple, blue, yellow, or green. You're the winner. We'll reserve it for you. Sorry, Chris, you didn't win. Yellow is the Salima's choice. Oh, that's what you picked. Okay, okay, okay. So you win. Oh, this is funny. You Wait, win. drum roll, everyone. Drum roll oh. at home, please. Okay. Here's the best part. I wrote all of the prizes on green sticky notes, not remember about the uh, uh, green screen, so you can't actually read it, so it's less dramatic. You win Martina's special surprise box. And in the special surprise box, I'm not going to tell you what's in it, but I'm going to mail you in the mail a special box of surprises. And um, you'll have to tell everybody what's in there uh, whenever you um, get it. Um, so in the yellow, that's what you get. My special surprise box. You're going to have to um, message me, uh, write me in a, in a Facebook message or email info. Um, and I'm going to um, mail you something. <laughs> um, and that'll be really fun. So give me your mailing address if you're comfortable with that or your school address, you know, whatever. Um, but it's going to be super fun. Okay, so back to the quick draw until we're interrupted again. I just started with a phrase. So I wrote, um, I see. And together we are going to fill in the details. So you are going to be drawing, but you're not going to be drawing yet. So what, 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 what do I see? So we're going to create a little image together. We're going to use our imaginations. And so we're what looking in the comments I for the answer see. to this. Yes, thank you. Martina, did you start your timer again? What? I did, yes. What do I see? Any ideas? What do I see? Is it a, do I see a person? Do I see an animal? Do I see an object? A Christmas tree? Oh, I don't alien. see a Christmas tree. I don't see, oh, an alien. Oh, I, I see an no, I see a duck. That's what I see, Wendy. I see a duck. I see a duck. I see a duck. Um, guys, what is the duck like? What kind of a duck do I see? Do I see a big duck, a small duck, a blue duck? Uh, oh, you know what, Amelia? I see a dragon duck. I know that's not what you're saying, but that's what I see. I see a dragon duck, I see a cranky dragon duck, a sad dragon duck. Yes, I see a sad dragon duck. I see a sad dragon duck with boots. I see a sad dragon duck with boots, guys. That is what I see. I see a 
sad dragon duck with boots. Now, this is what we are all gonna draw. So I'm gonna give you, it'll be about one minute. Everybody get your device. Or your, I'm not, or not your device. Whoa, where did my background just go? There we go. Um, we are all going to draw. I, oh, this is weird. This is like going crazy on me. I see a sad dragon duck with boots. I want everybody to draw a picture of I see a sad dragon duck with boots. And I'm gonna draw it too. And when you guys are done drawing, I see a sad dragon duck with boots. Then what I want you to do is um, if you can uh, tag, share it on social media. Um, we were going to try, it, we wanted to do it in the comments, but unfortunately Facebook Live, I don't think lets you do that in comments. So um, so the only, so, and then we were like, well, we'll share a document, but if you guys are on your phones, that's hard. So tag me in social media. I see a sad dragon duck with boots. Draw that picture and then send it to us. And I'm gonna draw it too. I feel like I should be like, have a waiting music while, oh good, that's good with the, oh gosh, is it GIF or GIF? I always forget. That's one of those words that no matter how many times I. I believe it is GIF. GIF, like the peanut butter, I just gotta remember that. Butter. Which is confusing because that's with the J. I'm gonna confuse myself. Okay, I see, so first I'm gonna draw myself, I see. And so we're all drawing a sad dragon duck with boots. Now, a little okay, tip if you're doing this with your kids, one thing you might want to consider is you give them, you say you're giving them a minute, you said the phrase as many times as Martina has said, I see a sad dragon duck with boots. But then when you think it's time to move on, you start counting down. And the beauty of this is A, you're counting down in the target language. Hopefully they know that when you get to zero, they need to be done. And you control the speed of the countdown. Alicia, I'm really glad you're talking right now because I definitely cannot draw and, and <laughs> and do that, but that's okay. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like if this this is this is a little weird because it's like Facebook Live, and so if people are just scrolling by, they'll be like, "Oh, why is Martina frozen?" Um, but if you're in class, silence is a great thing. Like, don't ever be afraid of just letting the kids draw while you draw for a minute. Um, and drawing. This is my sad. I see a sad dragon duck with boots. That's mine. So I would love to see your sad dragon duck. With boots. What do you want people to tag you with? Oh, um, on Twitter, uh, it's at Martina Bex. And on like Instagram, it's at Comprehensible Classroom. If you can find a way to share it, if you can share a well, you can't share a photo in the comments. Um, if anybody wants to start a post on the Somos group and share stuff in there, I'd be, that would be great too. I just want to see your pictures. You don't have to share them. But, oh, the brilliant timer, the brilliant timer. Oh shoot, now I just stopped it. I gotta restart it all the way. Hold on. Guys, this is way too many things for, for me to be doing. I know. Um, and the one last time. one was Vanessa Ortiz was the last Vanessa, person. Vanessa. So Vanessa, you get to choose a prize card. You can choose green, blue, dark purple, purple, or red, Vanessa. What would you like, Vanessa? Red, purple, dark purple, blue or green, whichever one you want, Vanessa. I, she says, that's not a color, Vanessa. Tell us what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> Let me tell you what I want, dude, I am, it's one S I'm trying to tell you. Vanessa, what, what do you, Vanessa, what do you want? Red, she can, oh, dark blue, okay, dark blue. All right, Vanessa, you win a subscription to El, you can't see it, that's so funny. El Mundo en Tus Manos. And Vanessa, if you already have, if you already own that, uh, then we can negotiate. But that is your prize. So you win a one-year subscription to El Mundo en Tus Manos. And that is your prize. Okay, now, uh, Dragon Duck with Boots, we're moving on to the next thing. 
The alien has. The alien has. What does the alien have? What does the alien have? What does the alien have? Does the alien have an eye? Does the alien have a nose? Does the alien have a friend? Does the alien have a big mouth? Ooh, a red the alien has oh, a pet snake. A pet snake, a dragon mask. Boogers. boogers. The alien has boogers. Three pet cats and a pet rock. The alien has boogers and a pet rock. What color? are the boogers. The alien has boogers and a pet rock. What color are the booger? What well, somebody color? suggested strawberry margarita. So I think his boogers are strawberry margarita. Strawberry. Oh yeah, like rainbow color, Janice said. Um, has strawberry, the alien has strawberry margarita boogers. Okay. The only thing is, guys, if you're doing this with your own students in class and they're level one kiddos, then you would not say that the alien has strawberry margarita boogers. That'd be a lot. So maybe stick to like green or blue. But we are doing this in our shared language. And so we're going to go with strawberry margarita boogers. But what color is the alien? So the alien has strawberry margarita colored boogers. But what color is the alien? The rainbow stripe Abigail, the rainbow stripe, rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a pet rock. What color is the pet rock? The rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers. Ooh, do they taste like strawberry margaritas? That's a good question. I wonder if they have the same effect as strawberry margarita boogers. That would be interesting. I wonder if people would still be so opposed to eating boogers if boogers were really strawberry margaritas that grew in your nose cavity. I'm gonna stop that train of thought. The, rain, <laughs> the rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a chartreuse, a glittery chartreuse and a glittery, I, I really hope that somebody has nothing better to do with their night tonight than draw a full color drawing of this for me. I'm going to have to switch out to my flare pens here. Yes, it would okay. be a really fun and relaxing activity. The rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a glittery chartreuse pet rock. All right, everybody, put down your typing fingers and draw it. While, Mart while you all are drawing and Martina's drawing too, I see that somebody has a question. Um, <gasps> it, it scrolled by so fast, but I think I've got it. So I'm going to answer Gosh. the question okay. while y'all are drawing. But would okay. you tell us the sentence again, real fast? The rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a glittery chartreuse pet rock. The so, rainbow stripe alien. Oh, I'm going to stop saying it now. So the question, I think, and again, it scrolled by so fast, I can't get it, and I'm really sorry, but I believe the question was, what do you do if the students do not have um, the language to respond to what you're ans asking? Mm -hmm. Like these amazing words like chartreuse and strawberry margarita and things. Well, um, there's a few things you can do. Um, two words in English aren't going to kill anybody and you're going to get some really fun personalized language. Like in my class, my kids all knew how to say rainbows, bicycles, and like uh, kittens because th that was part of our shared language. Um, and if you don't know how to say glitter in the language that you're teaching, it's okay. It's not a common word. I had to look it up. Don't feel bad. What a great opportunity to demonstrate the appropriate use of something like word reference, right? 
Yes, great answer. One thing that I would add, Alicia, is um, giving your kids options. Um, I know it, maybe at first it seems like, oh, well, if they're not like, uh, they can't be as creative if I'm telling them, do they have this or this? But if that's what allows them to participate in the activity, it creates, it's, I mean, I, I kind of want to say the illusion of creativity, but it really is creativity. So you can give your students two options and you can choose words that um, either you know are going to be fairly easy for them to understand because perhaps they have, um, perhaps they're cognates that have a shared connection. And also words that are very concrete, um, uh, that aren't, don't have a lot of ambiguity, like chartreuse is a very hard word in the target language because a lot of people aren't totally sure what chartreuse is. Um, but if you say the word blue or green or red, like that word is going to stick with students more easily because um, it's uh, kids have a strong concept of, of what that is. It's a very concrete word. So this is my, um, I don't have color, so I'm going to have to add color later. But this is, oh, isn't that funny? We both have little antenna things. Yeah. And they're both, the, they're draining the boogers into their margarita glass. So, well, clearly, okay. what else are you going to yeah. do with your strawberry flavored boogers? <laughs> strawberry margarita. Okay. So, um, awesome. I can't wait to, for you guys to see this. Oh, yeah. Jamboard does sound really fun for that. I bet uh, Bertha will, uh, maybe we can uh, tap her for an idea for that. She seems to be our Jamboard pro. So can I can I address a couple questions that are coming up? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I see you guys answering each other's questions. How could you do this virtually? There's lots of ways. But one great question is, what if students don't like to draw? And uh, master teacher Lori Clark. Oh, last commenter is Anna Owenby. Anna. Okay, Anna, Owen Anna. 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 Hold that thought. Remember your thought. It was about Lori Clark. Um, okay. And uh, wait, Anna, 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 you can have, oh no, blue is not a, a choice. You can have green, blue, purple, red, dark purple. What prize card do you want? The green is disappearing. So Anna Ownby, red, purple, dark blue, or green? Red, purple, dark blue, or green? Tell me what prize you want, Anna, and you will get it. Anna, Anna, Anna. I wish we could all hear each other. I really. Anna. And, oh, purple. She's like purple. Okay. So, Anna, your prize is a digital curriculum bundle of your choice. So Anna, email uh, email info at comprehensibleclassroom.com or message me on Facebook to claim your prize. You get a digital bundle of your choice. And don't worry, guys, we still have three big prizes left. So Lori Clark, Alicia, you were saying. Okay, digital bundle. Sorry, Lori Clark, Hearts for Teaching, Teaching Kids How to Draw. Where was I? Lori Clark actually um, has led this in a few different workshops where she guides kids through literally start with a line. Oh. Now make the line dance. What about you do to make the line dance? What if you add a head to the line? Huh. And and you can just kind of walk kids through that. But here's the thing. It's not about the art. It's about the pleasure. And I think really helping kids get an idea that I don't really care what you draw. It's not about the art. I'm not grading you on your art. I just want to see what comes out and we'll have fun. Yeah, I think I think that's so true. And I, I think that um, much in the same way that people have ideas about themselves as language learners, um, most people have an idea about themselves like, oh, I'm someone who likes to draw or doesn't like to draw or I'm good at drawing or I'm not good at drawing. Usually enjoying drawing is connected to your perception of how good you are. But I mean, just in in terms of our brain and what drawing does, like everybody should love to draw <laughs> um, as long as you're not worried about the product too much. So um, yeah, uh, you guys are asking about the um, about the digital bundles. The, the semester two bundle is out and, but uh, Anna, you can choose whatever you want. So digital one bundle, digital two bundle, whatever you want. Okay, next one. So we already have, the rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a glittery chartreuse pet rock. And we had, I see a sad green 
sad dragon duck with boots. This time I feel like just for um, practicality's sake, let's try to keep it a little bit more boring so that you can see what we could do um, if we were really in our class with our students. I mean, I'll still do this in English, but the word is runs, runs. So I'm not gonna be taking any strawberry margaritas on this one. Runs, who runs, who runs? Who runs? Who runs? Who runs? Does Martina run? Used to run. Haven't run in months. <laughs> Alicia's job. Is sort of pretzel keep... runs. Run. Wendy, you're hilarious. Ooh. Wendy's been helping write some of the story builders, and we have a similar sense of humor. I think the Grinch runs. A horse runs. A zebra runs. The refrigerator runs. Yes, the refrigerator runs. I just have to. Okay, the refrigerator runs. So you should probably go catch it. <laughs> Somebody has third graders at home. <laughs> Do prank calls still happen? Like, I mean, I remember like getting prank calls on our home telephone, but like, is that a thing anymore? No, now they're all robo calls. Ah. Gross. The refrigerator runs. The refrigerator runs to where does the refrigerator run to? The refrigerator runs to hmm, where would if I were refrigerator, where would I run? If I were a refrigerator, would I run to the lake? No, that sounds dangerous. To, to the, the park? To my house, I do need another refrigerator. To the grocery store. Okay, I'm trying to think of things that would be really simple. To the beach, away from the children. Away from to the garbanzo children. land. The oven store, away from the children. To the coffee shop. The refrigerator runs to, oh, we can do the North Pole. That's easy. To the North Pole. Um, how is the refrigerator feeling? Is the refrigerator a sad refrigerator, a happy refrigerator, angry refrigerator? I don't know. What kind of, how is this refrigerator feeling when it runs to the North Pole? I always have to wait for this to catch up. I'm seeing. We're still on, on destinations in the comments. Feels excited to meet Santa. I won't make any comments in case anybody's children are listening. So the refrigerator could definitely be going to the North Pole to meet Santa because he lives there. Exhausted. The exhausted. Oh, the that's warm. a good one. <laughs> the warm. Exhaust. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with exhausted. That's what I'm going to do because that's a really easy, I'm always thinking about Spanish. So maybe not, but in Spanish, that's, a, that's even a comment. Carlos Jose suggested expecting. And I think that's hilarious. Jose, your sense of humor just rocks my world all the time, sweetie. You are- What was it? Said what? Expecting. <laughs> that's my, my refrigerator is perpetually in a state of, uh, Pregnancy. <laughs> At least it looks like that when you open it. I inherited that skill from my mom. Uh, the exhausted refrigerator runs oh, to the North Pole. But you know what? The exhausted refrigerator does not run to the North Pole alone. Who does the exhausted refrigerator run to the North Pole with? The exhausted refrigerator runs to the North Pole with. Oh, hungry would have been good. That would be so ironic. God, with, a baby so freezer? Good. with a baby freezer yes chris oh my gosh the exhausted refrigerator runs to the north pole with a baby freezer that he kidnapped no just kidding he didn't do that but that makes sense because it's like usually the refrigerator is like big and then underneath they're on the side you know it's kind of like a baby freezer <gasps> prime time Okay, while I'm doing the prize, you guys draw. The exhausted refrigerator runs 
to the North Pole with a baby freezer. And the our winner, winner, when it went off, was oh, Oraria. Yeah. Oh, Oraria, I'm going to try to pull up your name again. Oraria, I can't see your last name, so I can't tag you, but would you put your name in the comments, please? Oh, Oraria. Somebody. You are Oraria. the winner. Pick your. Okay, Oraria, you get green, invisible green, or purple, or red. Invisible green, purple or red, invisible green, purple or red, and green, purple or red. What prize do you want, Oraria? Green, purple, or red? Oh no, someone said, I have a someone said coffee mug, which is so interesting because I have a oh, coffee mug I right here. Oh, purple, she picked purple. Okay, purple, purple. Okay, so the purple prize is <gasps> your choice. I can't see it. I should not have done these in green. Should not have been thinking. Your choice. You get to choose anything you want, Oraria. You can choose any digital bundle. You can choose anything. I could even put together another special surprise box and send one of those to you. Uh, but you get your choice. So email me, info at comprehensibleclassroom.com, Oraria or message me on Facebook and I will arrange your prize. So let me know what you want. Could be a garbanzo subscription, anything. Okay, the exhausted refrigerator runs to the North Pole with a baby freezer. I'm not gonna draw, I'm not gonna draw that one because I was talking through it. So hopefully you guys were drawing it, but draw okay. your exhausted refrigerator running to the North so, but first, Baby I want to talk about a couple things that we're watching Martina do, oh. and that is accepting and rejecting. Wait, Pamela just said, Oraya wants garbanzo for all of us. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and uh, Oraya, I am so sorry. I said your name wrong. I'm super dyslexic, and the print is like this big. So please forgive me. I am really sorry. But you guys, what have you noticed how martina is accepting and rejecting suggestions so she's not being like oh that's a stupid idea she's acknowledging them she's going with it and then she's choosing something else it's not a big deal but what she's really modeling is like an acceptance of all answers but ultimately she's in control she's deciding I think that's where I like to be. To point out because we are actually in control when we're doing these kind of things for our students. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for us to say, uh-uh, that's not going to fly. Mm -hmm. And I would also say, uh, that makes me think, it's also okay to feel like you're out of control sometimes. Because sometimes, especially in an online format, I can kind of get to that point where a lot of suggestions are coming in and i am like second guessing myself like i'll say no to one thing and then i'm like shoot i should have said yes to that thing and you can get in this awkward and and it's okay to feel like that um and it's okay to say you know what and go back and take something that you had maybe said no to before it's also okay to pretend that you heard it again or that someone said it again that was one of those like white lies that um i know annabelle allen talks about annabelle williamson talks about her um, like white lies that she tells her students, but that was one of the ones that um, I've, I learned way back in the beginning of me and TPRS that you can always pretend that you heard an answer, pretend that you heard an answer again. Um, oh, that's a great question, Caroline. So you said sometimes suggestions, only, they, they come from the same students, like the same, and that's, we're seeing that right now, like the same people are giving suggestions over and over and over and over, and then the quieter ones aren't. Um, and so some one of the things that I did, I had one class in particular where just like the whole class was quiet. Um, ask questions ahead of time. Actually, I remember Alicia, when you were uh, teaching a language lab, um, co-teaching a language lab at IFLT, you guys had done that. Like you had places on the wall, you had famous people and, you, and the students in the class filled those out ahead of time. And so then when you needed a suggestion, you just went to the poster. And that way, all of the students had a chance to have their ideas shared. Um, and it was like not so frantic in the moment of like the, their questions are being bombarded. So if you know ahead of time, like if it's I see, um, you could decide ahead of time, like, oh, I want animals. So you could have students write a list of animals. You could have them write a list of um, emotions. You could have them write a list of 
adjective, um, of, uh, like physical descriptors, um, things like that, so that they can, um, so that and you- then, Annabelle Williamson has an amazing blog post about how to do that kind of gallery walk style mm -hmm. um, for coming up with suggestions and use it as a differentiation and equity of voice building technique. Awesome. Um, so let me see if I can find that. I was like, I wonder if you'll be able to find that blog post while we're talking and do this. That's well, fine. we'll see. Um, yeah. You know, another thing, um, I know I don't remember who asked that question originally, but actually um, I had one class that was too crazy. And so I wasn't doing this because some kids were overshadowing others. It was just, everyone was insane. Um, and I actually did drawing. So I would have kids draw their suggestions. Um, and so that's something that's written into the SOMOS plans in a couple of places, but instead of having kids shout them out, they have to draw their picture and show you their picture. So, you know, as we're talking about ways to bring in drawing, um, with through this activity, that would be a really fun one um, to kind of slow it down again. Um, and Alicia is looking for that thing. Um, so Pamela, you, Pamela asked, um, are you trying to focus on any kind of vocabulary or anything? Um, so tonight I picked um, uh, on Alicia's suggestion, I picked um, words to start out with that are from the first six units of SOMOS, knowing that um, a lot of you guys are in that place-ish. So um, has, sees, runs, but beyond that, you pretty much know, especially if you're teaching a level one class, you know what words your work students know and which words they don't. And um, it's also okay to bring in some English that you can translate on the spot, like Alicia said earlier. So yeah, actually, I think I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna do the uh, next one because we, we wanted to talk about its assessment and we don't have that much time left. So, um, so well, actually, first we should say, what do we do with these pictures once we have them? Like you guys just drew all these pictures and obviously you're not on, I know, uh, you're not on camera with us. So I can't, I can see Alicia's pictures, but you know, in your class, if you're, if even if you're in a Zoom class, um, you can have students hold up their pictures to the screen. You can have them take screenshots and share them. Um, it's a little bit harder for us just because of the Facebook Live um, format. But once you do get the pictures, whether you accept them through a learning management system or in the Zoom chat, what can you do with them, Alicia? Um, well, there's a few things you could do. I see somebody suggested use as a formative assessment. Heck, use as a summative assessment. Wait a second. Is somebody trying to steal our assessment show? We're supposed to be the ones giving assessment ideas tonight. <laughs> absolutely. No, I, you could absolutely use this as a summative or uh, um, or a formative assessment. There's a couple different ways you could do this as an assessment. You could take pictures of every, whoa. Nanette. Nanette, Nanette is on mute. Nanette, Nanette, Nanette is the winner. Nanette, there are two prizes left. You can choose invisible green or red. Invisible green or red. Invisible green or red. Invisible green or red. Which prize do you want? Which prize do you want? Which prize do you want? Invisible green or red. Do, 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 do. I'll just keep going on. Invisible green or red. I promise I'll come back to assessments. Yes, we'll come back to assessments. Meanwhile, look at all these ideas. But I can't focus on any ideas. I just need Nanette to pick invisible green or red. Invisible green or red. Invisible green. Chris says go green. <laughs> I love I love your opinions, Chris. <laughs> I a picture of you, Chris, from Teacher Labs. That uh, but it was a very funny picture, and it totally made my day. So thinking about you today. Everybody else is picking for Nanette. Oh, invisible green. She picked invisible green, and the prize is a Garbanzo subscription. Hey, that look at that. How cool that worked out. It's like this. Wow. Cool. Okay, Nana, and if you already have Garbanzo, no worries. We can hook you up with something different or we can extend your Garbanzo subscription. So message me on Facebook or email me, Nana, and we will get you hooked up with your prize. And we only have one prize left. What will it be? Okay. Assessment, Alicia. Formative oh, let me just pop this in the comments. Email info at comprehensible. Thank you. I will try to spell it right. Okay. I know you all love watching me type, but isn't this just like distance learning um, <laughs> and teaching, right? Well, okay, and, it's, it's, and like being comfortable with silence, like that's a really good thing. It's really hard, especially like 
I don't know. I tell myself that it's harder when it's on Facebook and we're talking to teachers, but it's really the same. Like it, it's awkward to have people that are trying to waiting to listen to you and you feel like I just need a minute to gather my thoughts, but that's okay. Okay. So here are my assessment ideas. Well, here's some ways to use it. Type up sentences, take pictures of student work, have them submit them and have them match. Okay, type up sentences. You type up sentences. So I type, type up sentences. sentences. I type up the, what is it? Our alien has red margarita boogers and- The uh, rainbow stripe alien has strawberry margarita boogers and a glittery chartreuse pet rock. And my students have to match the sentence to the picture. That's one idea. My students could also, um, because I really wanna focus on the input. I don't think that there's a lot of use for them what? telling me these sentences. You wanna you want to focus on input, Alicia? Who even let you into this group? Uh, funny enough, <laughs> there's a story there. Um, <laughs> so I would type up the sentences to provide the input and have them match it. Um, I would also, this is a fun one you could do. You could put different pictures from different kids around the wall and have them draw something else, like add <laughs> To the drawing and then um see if you might have to put a little ground rules around that first. yeah you definitely have to do some ground rules but i've done something where i've used student drawings and then had them draw somebody else's drawing and pick the oh, right funny. sentence to go with it uh -huh. that's really fun mm -hmm. um yeah there's a lot of different things that you can do with it and the key to me would be to get them reading mm -hmm. with the pictures yeah yeah, and I would say reading or listening too. So like, even if you do, um, because, you know, the kids drawings, they're not going to be seeing each other's drawings while they're drawing, likely, unless you're using a, I guess if you were using like a pair deck or something that would be possible for them. Um, but uh, you'll, you'll end up having two versions of the same picture, and then you could describe one of them. And some of the things that you're describing in the picture are going to be the same, like, um this is a an alien with three eyes maybe both of the two people's aliens have three eyes and two arms and two antennas and maybe only one of the aliens a kid drew with two antennas so that's a way for them to listen and they're thinking critically that would be a good assessment but also a good um, input activity um and then Oh, there was something else. Oh, I was thinking, I don't really know what this would look like, but just for a fun activity, you know, the paper plate activity where you have them with a paper plate on their head. So I don't know how many layers to add into this, but I feel like that could get incorporated somehow. And I don't Well, know and I also feel idea, like you but... could then add like, okay, now I'm going to, I'm going to describe Martina's drawing and we're all going to draw it on a paper plate mm -hmm. and make it that mm -hmm. listening input. Um, yeah. I love that because it's, it's co-created. And if you, if you know me, you know that our co-created texts that we read or listen to together are the most powerful because you know that they're comprehensible to your students and their high interest. Um, can I say something about all of these awesome text suggestions that I'm seeing? Yeah. Thanks. So, you know, we've all uh, heard that there are some students with um, differing access to the internet. We know that we have them in our classes and we know that some kids are maybe doing all of their coursework on a game console or a borrowed phone or a borrowed device. And I just want you to think of what I want. I wonder what barriers you're putting up if you're using yet something else in addition to your meeting software um for students to access so if they need to not only get onto zoom but also switch over to a pair deck do they have the bandwidth for that and i i don't know the answer because it's going to be different in every single person's context yeah. but i strongly strongly suggest that you ask yourself are these tech tools creating barriers hmm. um, thank you for saying that and, and i think that that's uh there are so many layers to uh, techno using technology and class using additional technology tools. Um, and I think that that is, you know, the most critical one. 
Um, and, and there's so many different layers of barrier, barriers. Um, I mean, from, from access to uh, just like, it's so complicated. And so who are going to be the kids that are like really struggling with like, I mean, I think about certain people in my life that are, really have a hard time with technology even though they have the actual access, like as soon as you add another layer of technology on, like they're not, they, they, they're like, okay, well, somebody else is gonna get this done first and I'm done, so. And I've seen um, it with my, with my graduate students, like sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah, and it's really frustrating. <laughs> like I have all of the sympathy in the world. Um, the, the amount of rage that I get when <laughs> we're trying to do a fun club and something that's supposed to be working is not working, like it's horrible. So, um, so yeah, thank you for saying that. And so, um, and look for opportunities to do things tech free if you can. So and I do see a question. So what are your suggestions? How about paper and pencil? I know that um, it is harder. It like some teachers need to go physically drop off paper and pencil to their students classroom or to their students homes if you're comfortable or provide a place. But I do think um that that's worth it because if paper and pencil is something pr that pretty much everybody can be provided access to without a lot of special and then paper pencil take a picture on their chromebooks if they've got it take a picture on their phones let's keep it simple we had another prize thing go off and it was megan stone megan stone and i think it was spelled uh M-A-E maybe, so if you try to tie her, but Megan Stone, you get the last prize. This one will be easy because there's no choice involved. You get red. Nobody wanted red, but Megan gets it. And Megan, oh no, Anna already chose red. Shoot, now which one was it? Which one wasn't chosen? Now I'm going back through. Hold on, invisible green was chosen. Oh, I found it. It's no, digital bundle. <laughs> what, whatever. Oh gosh. I don't know what happened to it. You get anything. You get your choice also, Megan. Uh, Megan Stone. Stone. What? Okay, color? Megan. Oh, you, you get your choice. You, you get, get anything. Get Sorry, I totally flubbed that up. I'm like going crazy now. I, did I give away? I gave away an original. Yeah, whatever. Megan, you get whatever you want. So there you go. Surprise. I think Dawn must have fallen. <laughs> anyway, Megan, that was an super anticlimactic. What do you want? What do you want? Hey, let's do a brain break. Okay. Shall we? Okay. This yeah. one I learned from Annabelle Williamson, and y'all need to okay. play at home. I'm going to count down three, two, uh -oh. one, and I'm going to point in a direction. You're looking at me three, two, one, but after I point, you look down. You, or I'm sorry, you look the opposite of the direction that I'm pointing. Oh, no. Are you ready? Okay. Play, play it with me at home. Three, two, one, go. Oh, opposite. Three, two, one, go. Wait, oh, but I am looking. Wait. Oh, I because know. my video's reversed. <laughs> oh, gosh. Three, two, one, go. Now you lead, Martina. Uh, three, two, one, go. No, yeah, it looks like you're in the same way that I'm pointing. Because I think our videos are opposite. Down. Ha! Oh, that's true. Okay, gosh. I'm, okay, three, two, one, go. Oh my gosh, I can't lead this. Are you kidding me? Oh, Martina, a middle uh, schooler can do it. All right. You guys, isn't that fun to do with your kids? We've been doing it in teacher labs. It's been a flipping gosh. treat. Credit to Annabelle Williamson, Hi. and she has a virtual brain breaks uh, asynchronous workshop. It is worth every penny, you guys. Awesome. Um, and maybe somebody can pop the, uh, uh, oh, I had like a little giveaway time thing. I forgot about that. And look how pretty it is. Dang it. Well, we already had all our giveaways. Uh, assessments though. Um, so I really quickly want to talk about end of semester assessments because everybody is like, oh my gosh, I need an assessment for the semester. I have to have a mentor, I have to have a final. So what are your thoughts about assessment, Alicia, um, given the situation that we're in right now? All right, so first of all, I'm, I'm bringing my whiteboard in, guys. By the way, behind oh, no, she's the getting... National Park, it's really pretty. Um, 
So the first thing I want you to ask yourself when you have to give a semester assessment is who says? I know that when I first started my job, I thought that I had to because that's what teachers did. And it turns out I was wrong. If you're- So you were never, you were never even explicitly told like you have to give a midterm. You just always had taken midterms. And so you figured you needed to give yourself, your students a midterm, probably a really scary, important one. Oh yeah, huge. High, high stress, high, like high stakes, all of the bad things. So quick, like study packet ahead of time. Yeah. So that's the first thing. If the answer is no, and this is a good time to really push because COVID has made everything bananas. Yeah. And now's a good time to push back. Do we really have to? Um, but if the answer is no, then don't. Just let it go, you guys. Hopefully you've been doing formative assessments. There are plenty of assessments in SOMOS. Um, hopefully that meets your needs. But I recognize that that may not meet your needs. So I just thought Wendy just said, we have to have a final experience. Oh my God. I, I would feel like I could come up. I, I could come up with all sorts of things for a final Oh yeah. Experience. Oh yeah. They have never given me that requirement. Strawberries made of strawberry margaritas, anybody? anybody? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the first thing, <laughs> uh, if the answer is yes, is there a required format? Ask yourself, can I get the same information from giving them a short paragraph that uh, exposes them to everything we've done so far this term and ask them some reading comprehension questions? Is the, if that works, do that. It really doesn't need to be any harder than that. And I'm not even gonna get into the, how do we deal with them cheating thing? Because that's a whole other issue, yeah. okay? Um, not I would say even if, uh, Alicia, I always felt like, um, so in my school, we had um, like a, a midterm and a final week. And during that time we had uh, a long, like an extended block that we would see our classes just once. So they were with us for like the equivalent of three hours for finals. But I didn't realize that we didn't have to use that. Like we were not actually required to give them a final that filled three hours. The time was there if we needed it, but if we didn't, we didn't have to. So again, just uh, you know, uh, reiterating what you're saying that like ask the questions. Um, do you have to give a final? Is it is do you have to follow a specific format does it have to be a certain length or is it just like is that what people do because that's what they have with the people before them done like what what is actually on paper that you are required to do and is that flexible like can you push back on that and are your administrators willing to change because a lot of times probably no one's asked them the questions either so the next question i was would ask is what can i do that's going to be the easiest for them and easiest for me because to quote Terry Waltz, she's really like rocking my world right now, assessment should be successment. We're not trying to catch kids with what they don't know. We want them, we want to celebrate what they do know, right? Anne-Marie Chase, senorachase.com, calls her tests celebrations of knowledge. I call mine celebrations or opportunities to impress me. Um, and it's really about celebrating. So some concrete ideas for making it easy use an assessment in the somos unit that you are teaching they're there use it usually it's a reading assessment there's often listening assessments especially if you're using somos traditional credit it though terry <laughs> um and that's your reading grade use the rubric We've linked, we, uh, Martina has shared tons of fantastic um, writing about how to grade reading. You can look at it on the blog or I'll pop in when I'm not talking a link to all of our assessment resources. So that's one thing you can do for writing. Give them I wanna a- just, I just wanna clarify. So for reading assessments, even though the assessments that are included in SOMOS say they're like for the unit, SOMOS is cumulative. Every unit is bringing in vocabulary from previous units. So in the same way that you would expect a semester assessment to be cumulative, so are these small assessments. So instead of saying 
that this is a unit assessment, just call it your midterm. Don't treat it any differently. Just say, this is your midterm. Voila. So use what you have for writing. Again, use what you have or make it even easier. Give them a five minute or 10 minute timed free write. Free write? Are you crazy? Does just whatever they want for a midterm? Why not? I guarantee you, with the pressure of time, you'll see what's really in their heads. If you have been using writings as a regular thing, this is going to be no big thing for them. And adding the time pressure really does show more of what they've acquired and graded on a holistic rubric, which research has showed is incredibly accurate and more resistant to bias. And you're done. There's, there's interpretive and expressive skills. Call it a day. So easy. So moral of the story, like you don't have to stress about making an assessment. You don't have to stress about finding the perfect assessment. Just do something small. And obviously some people, you guys are going to have crazy requirements and we are happy to support you in meeting crazy requirements if you have to. Um, but ask the questions and find, really figure out what is the minimum that we can do. Oh no, what are you looking at? Sorry, I just tried okay. to put, um, a, I just tried to put the, uh, I, Facebook just said I can't comment and my account has been suspended. <laughs> Um, well, I hope that you're not actually suspended. I hope that it's just blocked because sometimes I've commented in a Facebook live too many times and then it wouldn't let me comment anymore. But I really hope that's the case because if you're not on Facebook, I'm screwed, Alicia. <laughs> so um, I will, uh, you know what, I'm going to message Martina this link and hopefully she can pop it in. Um, Heather or uh, Heather, if you're watching, could you pop in the shared link? I'm going to, I'm going to pop it like it's hot. Pop it in. So here's the thing, our amazing uh, co community resource manager, Heather Danishenko, who we just love to pieces, put- oh, Seth, I can't comment right now either. <sighs> you guys, else? apparently we're like locked out of fun club. They hate us. Anyway. Not fun <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> so we will make sure this goes out in a new letter, in a newsletter, right? Or have a landing page mm -hmm. or We'll make sure you yeah, get this we'll take care of it. I'll make something pretty for you tomorrow. It'll be fine. So um, but our amazing yeah. community resource manager put together a series of suggestions for SOMOS uh, assessments, specifically from the collaborative drive that you can mix and remix at will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see a lot of people asking about digital uh, writing assessments. And yeah, I mean, the cheating, there, there's really just nothing. There's no way around it. If a kid wants to cheat on a writing assessment, if they want to use Google, I mean, they're going to find a way, no matter how many little fail safes you put in there. And there are tricks. Um, and so really, the best thing that you can do is get them on pen and paper and have them send you a photo. Like, get away from technology. That's going to be a, a great thing. Or just... If you don't have to do a writing assessment, I mean, that sounds like a really good argument to telling your administrator, can't do a writing assessment this year. It's just not going to work. Okay. Well, it is 9.02. And that <laughs> means, and comment, sorry. <laughs> the, the fun was supposed to end at nine. So <laughs> now it's Celebration Boring Club. <laughs> Until. Uh, no, just kidding. Guys, thanks for being here. I don't know, Alicia, do you have any closing thoughts? I really appreciate that you are spending your time. Yeah, we're having fun, but also this is some quality PD. I'm not. And so um, pat yourselves on the back for this. We are honored that you guys choose to spend this time with us, um, mm -hmm. truly, because yeah. it means that you are trying to do the best that you can. You're embracing for many of you something that is new and wildly different than perhaps you were taught and certainly how you were taught to teach. And I, I feel humbled and incredibly thankful for you, uh, for your time and for your willingness to like try on these ideas. So thank you. Yes, I, I reiterate, it's so fun. Uh, I, thank you for being here. Um, this is a bright spot in my week whenever we get to do it. And um, it really is fun for us. And um, I, I, I thank you for, for your time. 
and just wishing you a very happy holidays and a, a great end semester. We didn't, oh, we didn't talk about self-care and wishing that you um, can find a way to take care of yourself as the semester is winding down. And, you know, with assessments, when we say, ask what you really have to do and what you don't have to do, um, take care of yourself uh, on during break, take a break and uh, be well. That's all folks. Have a good night.